today we will be going to the cheapest grocery store near me and I am going to be trying to buy as many groceries as possible with only $20. Then I'm going to come home and for the next week for dinner, I am going to be using these groceries to feed my family dinner. I am going to be trying to make these dinners as healthy as possible and delicious as possible. I know this might be a little tricky because grocery prices are so high right now, but I think we could do it. Let's go get to the store now. To start us out today, I am going to be sharing what I'm buying at the store to stay right at $20. My family loves chicken and typically it's one of my choice proteins for dinner, but chicken breast is getting so expensive these days. It's right about $3.50 per pound at my store, but you could buy chicken drumsticks for less than a dollar a pound. So I am grabbing this huge five pound bag of chicken drumsticks today for less than $5. A little bit of pasta will go a long way so I am picking up one pound of pasta. Chicken bouillon cubes add a ton of great flavor to your dish for a low price so this is going into my cart. Now a can of tomato paste. I have a really cool trick up my sleeve I'm going to be sharing with you with this can. I'm planning on using this rice in two dinners this week so I am excited and if you know me you know how much I love lentils. They're kind of like a nutritional powerhouse so I am grabbing a bag of of lentils. Next a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. This is pretty much just Rotel. I'm also grabbing a can of black beans. Next I'm going to be picking up some pork chorizo and growing up in New Mexico we had chorizo often and it's actually originally from Spain. Now over to the freezer area I'm picking up a bag of frozen peas. Now we're going to head over to the produce area and I'll first get a bag of carrots. These large carrots are always cheaper than the baby carrot so pay attention on the price and how much is in the bag always. Spinach has great nutritional benefits so I'll grab a bag of spinach and as you could see a bag of baby spinach that only has six ounces in it is almost a dollar more expensive than the regular spinach that has 10 ounces in it. So I'm grabbing the regular spinach. I'm also going to be picking up two russet potatoes and a yellow onion. Let's go head back to my house and see what we're having for dinner this week. I am so glad that I stayed in budget today. The first recipe that we are making is this lentil stew. I'm going to begin by cutting up our vegetables. So I'm just dicing a half of a russet potato. I'll slice two carrots and I'm only going to be using a quarter of our onion. I'll save the rest of the onion for other recipes. Over to the large pot on my stove, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil in there. I added my carrots and my onion. I'm going to cook these ingredients together for about three to four minutes. Now I'm going to add in my seasoning. So toss in about a teaspoon of paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. I am going to give this a really good stir. Now here's the tomato paste trick that I was telling you about earlier. So for this recipe, I wanted to use tomato sauce, but tomato sauce was more expensive than tomato paste. So I just used a half of a can of tomato paste, so just three ounces. And if you just mix that with water, it is pretty much just tomato sauce. So there you go, you will save a ton of money by doing this. After I added in my tomato paste, I added in seven cups of water along with the diced potato and two bouillon cubes. Now for the lentils, you're going to wanna use about a cup and a half of the lentils. I did rinse mine first, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And then here's the amount of lentils I have left. I don't have a ton left, as you can see, I used most of them for this recipe. I'm going to let this simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes on my stove or until the lentils are nice and tender and then you could serve this up. Here's what this dinner looks like. This dinner is so nutrient rich from the veggies and the spinach. Also, this is so flavorful. It does not taste like a super cheap meal at all. I was also going to add some of our spinach to it, but I totally forgot. Now we are making this black bean and rice skillet. So over to the pan on my stove, I'm adding in a tablespoon of olive oil. Once the oil was hot, I tossed in about a third a cup of our onion that I diced. I let this cook together for a couple of minutes. Now I'm going to add in one cup of uncooked white rice. And here's the rest of the rice that I have left in the bag. I'm going to use it in the next recipe. I'll let the rice cook in the pan for about a minute or two. Now I'm going to add in about two and one thirds 
cup of water along with one bouillon cube. The bouillon cube will add a lot of flavor. Now you could add in about a tablespoon of taco seasoning or you could use the following seasonings. A teaspoon of paprika, chili powder, cumin, and then a dash of pepper and salt. Now I'm going to add in one can of drained and rinsed black beans. I gave this a really good stir and I put the lid on top and then I realized that I totally forgot to add in my can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. I'm just going to add them in right now and you're going to want to let this simmer for a total of 20 to 25 minutes with the lid on. Stir it occasionally while it's simmering just so the rice doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan. Here's what my plate of food looks like. I had some cheese in the refrigerator, so I just sprinkled a little bit of cheese on top of ours. But if you don't have cheese on hand, you certainly do not need to top yours with cheese. This is super good and flavorful by itself. Now we're making this seasoned chicken and rice casserole. So right here I have a 9x13 baking dish. I'm spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray so the rice doesn't stick. Now I'm adding in two cups of chicken broth. I just microwaved water with a bouillon cube and that is how I came up with this chicken broth. Now I'm adding in one cup of our rice and as you see right here we basically don't have much rice left. We used it all now. I'm going to season this with a teaspoon of salt, pepper, onion powder, paprika, and some oregano and rosemary. I am going to give this a stir and then I'm going to kind of make sure that the rice is even, not just in like one spot in the casserole dish. Now I'm going to add in the chicken. So I counted and there's about 20 chicken drumsticks in this bag, so that's quite a lot. So I just used nine and I placed them right on top of the rice. I am going to season the top of the chicken with a dash of salt pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, oregano, and rosemary. I'm going to cover the top tightly with aluminum foil and this will bake in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 60 minutes. Here's what dinner looks like. That rice was so fluffy and seasoned well and delicious. And that chicken was like fall apart tender. I love it when my chicken drumsticks are like that, you know, like slightly overcooked. So then they're just falling apart. And then I also served this meal with the half of the bag of frozen peas from the store. So I only used half. We're going to be using the rest in another recipe. Now we're making this chicken vegetable pasta. So I have a large pot on the stove and into the pot, I'm adding in the remaining chicken drumsticks from the bag. So there's about 11 chicken drumsticks left. I added in about seven cups of water and one bouillon cube. We're going to boil this chicken and let it become falling apart and tender, just like super shreddable. So I let it boil for about 20 to 30 minutes on my stove. I just removed the chicken and then I shredded it up on a plate and I just discarded the bones. Into the same pot that we boiled the chicken in, I added a tablespoon of olive oil along with two large carrots that I sliced and a small amount of our onion. I just let this cook together for about two to three minutes. After that time was up, I added in the remaining three ounces of tomato paste that I had in my can. I'm also going to be adding in six cups of water at this point and one bouillon cube. I'm also going to add in about a teaspoon of salt, pepper, and oregano. Now add in the half of the bag of penne pasta. Give this a really good stir and let this simmer on your stove for about 12 to 15 minutes or until the pasta is tender. Now that the pasta is tender, I'm going to add back in our cooked shredded chicken. You're also going to want to add in two cups of our fresh spinach. I did make sure I chopped that spinach up just so it wasn't too big once it was wilted. I'm going to give this a stir and I'm going to let this cook together for a couple of minutes to let that spinach wilt down. Here's my plate of food. This is so flavorful and good. That chicken is super juicy and tender because it's like from a drumstick. This is delicious. You need to make it. 
Now we're making this chorizo with potatoes. So to begin, on my cutting board right here, I'm going to dice up my remaining potato and a half. I'm also going to cut up a small amount of our onion. Now over to the pan on my stove, I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I tossed in the potato and the onion that we just cut up. Now I'm going to add in our chorizo. I am just going to toss it in there. And then I'm going to break up the chorizo and I am just going to cook this all together for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once that time was up, I just added in one cup of chopped up spinach. I let the spinach wilt down and then I served this up. Here's my plate of food. This dinner is so simple to throw together. When I was a kid in New Mexico, people used to make this all the time, but they used to make it with eggs for breakfast. This is just a super delicious dinner as well. Now we're making this pasta with a veggie green sauce. So to this pot of boiling water on my stove, I'm adding in a half a pound of penne pasta. I'm going to cook it up according to the package instructions. And once the pasta is tender, I just removed about a half a cup of the water that the pasta cooked in and I saved it to the side for later. Now over to this pan on my stove, I added in a tablespoon of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added in the remaining small amount of onion that I had left. I also added in six ounces of frozen peas and five ounces of fresh spinach. I gave this a really good stir. Now I'm going to toss in a tablespoon of water and just watch the spinach wilt down over to my blender or you could use a food processor. Just add those veggies right in there. Also add in the half a cup of reserved pasta water and then you do need to season this up so I'm seasoning it with a half a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and two teaspoons of of oregano. Blend this up super duper well until it is smooth. Once it's through blending over to my stove, I have the cooked strained pasta. Just add the green veggie sauce right in there and give this a super duper good stir. Once it's well combined, you could serve this up. Here's my plate of food. We topped ours with Parmesan cheese that I had on hand. If you don't have Parmesan on hand, you don't have to top yours with that. This is high protein from the spinach and the peas. Also, this looks like something you'd get from a fancy restaurant, but it is so affordable. You guys, September's meal plan is out now. And on top of all the other helpful things in September's plan, I also added a whole bunch of freezer meals as a bonus for you. So that will help you out a lot this month. You could get it down below this this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.